Hi everyone, welcome back to the Turtle Wins the Race Home-Based Business Podcast. My name is Kara Bunton and I have owned a home-based business for over 20 years in various forms and it's been, my God, it's like 23 years. But let's talk about home-based business and today I'm going to be telling the story of the repossessed wedding cake and I just, I'm going to tell some stories about the worst customers that I've ever had and scams that people try to pull on you and we'll we'll get into it both for online selling and for just wedding cake stuff because there's a lot of you know people are scammy and most people are not let me just say that right up front most people are not insane most people are not scammers but every now and then you get one that makes you lose your faith in humanity and you just want to quit your job and you want to you want to just go get a job somewhere where you can clock in and clock out and come home and not think about this and not deal with the general public. All right. And when I go to the post office, I feel very bad for them because I listen to some of the junk that people tell them as they're standing there buying stamps. It's not the clerk's fault if you can't get the stamp that you want, lady. All right. So just move on. But and my favorite is some guy standing there going, this is your tax dollars at work. And I'm like, it's, they don't get tax money, so shut up. But regardless, I feel bad for people who have to deal with the general public. You're going to have to deal with the general public at some point if you work from home. And even if you're working online, especially if you're working online, oh my God, because people think, you know, the keyboard warriors, they, they don't have you right in front of them. They're going to type what they want to type and they think that they can control the situation. It's very annoying. But... I started out doing wedding cakes and that was my first, well, not my first business, but it was the first home-based business that I had where I live now. You get a lot of interesting people that way. And I will say that most of the people who I dealt with who were difficult were not the brides. It was the mother of the brides, partly because they paid for things and partly because they're just so nervous they're so nervous. And that's that's one thing I would say. If you get a difficult customer who's emailing you 20 messages a day and they're they're just constantly asking you questions, I, I'll take that back. A lot of them were brides. But generally, when people are that on top of things and that involved, then they're just really nervous about something. Sometimes you can diffuse the situation by saying, I can tell that you're really nervous, but don't worry. You hired me as the professional and I know how to handle this. And I actually have said that to people on Etsy before. There was somebody who was just sending me multiple messages, very, very, you know, just weird messages, like real specific questions, picking at things. And I hadn't even done the order. It was something, she, she had ordered something and it was just, it wasn't anything special. Like it wasn't any a custom thing or anything like that. And she just was, was just sending me so many messages. And I finally said, I'm just going to write. So I wrote back and said, I can tell that you're really nervous, but don't worry. I've done this a million times. It's going to work out. And she immediately wrote back and said, you're right. I'm really nervous because I have a family that is extremely critical and I'm in charge of the cake. So that, that kind of, you know, called her out a little bit, but it sets people at ease if they know that you understand their perspective. So keep that in mind that if you do get a customer who's very demanding it, kind of try to check the tone like if if you feel and trust your gut that's the first thing i'll say is trust your gut if you feel like something is wrong then trust that because a lot of times you'll ignore that feeling and it, it won't end up well but a lot of times people are just really nervous for whatever reason and you don't know that until they tell you all right, so let's let's talk about, okay, I will say the worst customer that I ever had for a wedding cake. This was a wedding cake customer. Um, well, let's, it, it kind of is wrapped up in scams. So this is going to be about terrible customers and scams at the same time. The worst customer that I ever had was a horrible woman, a terrible woman, who was very nice up until the point where the cake was delivered for 20 minutes and I had driven away. And I can't remember the, the, I think the situation was that she, they had come, I should have known. See, this is a situation where I should have known. They came to my house for a tasting appointment or my office or wherever I was doing them at that time. And they were insistent that they wanted this one specific design, but they didn't want fondant. 
Now, if you don't know, fondant is that rolled out icing that you put over a cake. It's very smooth, but it's chewy. It's like marshmallows. It's not, it, it, people don't like it here in, in the U.S. They're not as fond of, they tend to peel it off the cake. They did not want fondant. They only wanted buttercream. And the design that they wanted could not be done in buttercream. There's some things that you really can't do because you have to attach things to the cake or you have to paint on the cake or whatever it is. And fondant gives you a different surface to work with. So I told them, I can't do that. We don't want the fondant, blah, blah. And I said, okay, look, I will do some tiers in fondant and some in buttercream. If that's okay with you, the ones that you want, this one specific thing, I have to do in fondant. And they said, that's fine, that's fine. I should have known right then. Because one thing that you need to pay attention to is if customers say, oh, that's okay, I don't mind. When you're telling them the reasons why you can't do something and you need to do it a different way, they're not going to be okay with it. They, I learned that the hard way. They'll say, oh, that's fine, no problem. And then they're not because they either forget they said it or whatever. So the first thing is to document everything very thoroughly. No, actually, that's the second thing. The first thing is don't take the job, all right? Look, you don't have to take every job that comes along. This is something that's very hard to understand when you need the money, but sometimes it's not worth the money that the aggravation that you're gonna get down the road is you're gonna be ending up, you're end up earning like 10 cents an hour by the time you've spent all your time dealing with this person and giving refunds back for things that they say they didn't want, but they said was okay at the time. Just don't take the job. If you feel, again, if trust your gut. If you feel like something is wrong, don't take the job. That's You don't have to hire everyone. And you're hiring someone. When they have pay you, you're hiring them. See, I used to tell wedding cake clients, and not every all of them, but I would, I would say, you know what? We're also interviewing you. I'll tell you about another customer that I, that I fired before she hired me. Um, but let's get back to this woman. So, so this whole, it was the, it was the daughter, it was the bride and the, I don't know if the groom was there, but it was the mother and the bride and maybe some other women that they bring with them. You know, the, the experience, they want the wedding cake tasting experience. So they all want to get the experience. So anyway, they all said, this is fine. All right. So I write a very specific contract and my wedding cake contract was extremely specific. I would write each tier. I would draw it. I would write an arrow to it saying exactly what was on it. I would color it in. I had, you know, it was, everything was very clear what they were going to get. So the day came, I delivered the cake. It was exactly what they had ordered. The mother of the bride was at the reception venue and she said, this cake is beautiful. It's perfect. It's wonderful. I love it. So I'm like, great, good, okay. Because a lot of times they're not there when you're delivering because they are they should be off getting ready to go to the wedding, right? She shouldn't be at the reception venue. So, and I, did, I didn't deliver like hours and hours before. So that was a little weird, but she's out there poking around making sure everything's okay. And I, that should have set off some alarms too because generally, like I said, they're off with their daughter getting her ready to be married. So... I set the cake up, she loved it. I start driving home. At the time, my mother-in-law was in hospice. So I was driving home with my phone off because I don't talk on the phone while I drive. And I was not thinking about this cake anymore because I had delivered it and it was it was done, right? So I was driving back to hospice to be with my mother-in-law. And I apparently got multiple phone calls on the drive home where she said, this cake is terrible. It's awful, it's not what we ordered, blah, blah, blah. I don't think I even got the messages until later that day. And it might have been after the wedding because I was at the hospice, right? So I'm, I, don't even, I don't even know that I got the messages that day because everything was fine. It was perfect. It was the best cake ever when I delivered it. I think, okay, that's good. I'm done. Done with this one. Move on to the next. So the following morning, she calls me and starts chewing me a new one for no reason. And I'm like, you said that the cake was fine. It was terrible. And she just went off and she was telling me I should close my business. I'm the worst person in the world. It ruined the wedding. I was like, are you insane? And I was really confused and I went and got the contract and I brought it. I said, let me go get the contract. And I'm looking at the, and I said, this is exactly what you ordered. And she said, the contract doesn't matter. And I was like, yeah, it kind of does. It kind of does, lady. 
so she she basically yelled at me to the point where I hung up on her. I have never hung up on a customer before. I hung up on her and I'm like, I'm done. I'm not even talking to you anymore. And her daughter later that day called me and she was a lot calmer. Well, the, I think the first thing I did is I called the reception site because the first thing that you do is as a wedding vendor, if you have a problem with a customer, call the reception site. I'm just saying this, if you're a wedding vendor, because they're a third neutral part, third party neutral party, they, they will tell you what happened. And I said to the, the person there, I was like, I'm really kind of confused because she said the cake was great when I dropped it off, but then she wasn't happy. And the person at the reception site said, yeah, she wasn't happy with pretty much everything. So, okay, now it makes sense. She's at the reception site poking around, trying to pick holes in things. She's looking for refunds. All right, this is a very common thing. And this woman was not broke. And I, I will say that a lot of the people who treated me the worst over the time that I was doing wedding cakes were people who had a lot of money. All right, so don't, don't say that you want the high-end brides. Because that's not always that's not always a guarantee that you're going to be treated well and paid well. So they, you know, the re reception site basically said she was here finding fault with everything, and they they said, um, you know, the cake was fine, but she just wasn't happy with anything. And I'm like, oh my god. So I called. I think the bride called me later that day. Like I said, so the bride said, yeah, you know, and. Um, I, she, she said, I talked to the, I talked to the florist who you worked with. And I'm like, I didn't work with the florist that day. And she said, well, she was a guest at my wedding. And I said, well, who is this? And she's like, uh, I don't want to say. And I was like, okay, well then you're making this up because number this, this is a, like, this is a delivery to a town, not where I generally work. And I don't have relationships with other wedding vendors in that town. So she, she said, well, oh, you know, hemming and hawing, just making stuff up. They were basically looking for discounts. And this was actually a very common thing with wedding cakes at one point. It was right after the recession of 2008. And there were all kinds of articles in wedding magazines saying, this is how you get cheaper rates from your wedding vendors is complain after the fact and they will give you percentages back. So you're basically getting a discount on services, but it's because you're complaining afterwards. And the, everybody was running into this, florists, DJs, everybody was running into this with brides just finding fault with things afterwards. And this can happen to you selling online also. Like th this is very, it very clearly happens because people will write and say, there was something wrong with this and I want, I, I want my money back. And they're, what they're hoping is that you're going to say, well, I'll give you X percent off or they just want the thing for free, you know. So you have to... You have two choices. And this, this woman was terrible. And I told the bride, I have never been spoken to like that in my life. And I will not speak to your mother anymore. And she said, well, her mother just died recently. So she's kind of in a bad, and I said, yeah, well, guess what? I was driving to the hospice to, to sit with my mother-in-law while she dies. So FYI, um, and that's not an excuse for being nasty to people. So, you know, that kind of, took one excuse off her plate. But this is the thing. These people will have a lots, lots and lots of excuses why they should get refunds and rebates. And I think I ended up just refunding this woman completely because she then filed a complaint with Amex. Or I think I gave them like 50% off the cake. It was not worth it to me emotionally at that point to deal with her. And she was the worst. And then I think they also had their relatives like start posting on my Facebook page that the cake was terrible. I was like, oh my God, you people are insane. So yeah, I, and there's, there are times when it just is better to refund them and walk away and then have a good story to tell later. And if you are watching this, you know who you are, you heinous hag, you know who you are. Cause I just described your situation. You're the worst person in the world, FYI. Okay, so moving on from that, I've also had people um, online who do the same thing. So there will be people, like I said, they'll say, oh, this wasn't what I ordered or, you know, whatever the complaint they have. I call this the wandering complaint because when you, when you come up with an objection for the first complaint they have, they'll come up with a different complaint. 
And this happened a lot when I did cakes and they always ended up with the cake was dry. Okay, my cakes were not dry. And that's again, you call the reception site and they'll tell you, no, there was nothing wrong with the cake. It was really good. But that's one thing that they know that you can't dispute because it's a personal preference thing. And if they want to file a charge back with their credit card, they can say the cake was dry. And that could be their whole reason, you know. It was just a mess. Most, and again, most people are not like that. This was maybe like a half of a percentage of the people that I ever worked with. Most people were lovely. Most people were fine. They, they appreciated a good cake and that's why they came to me because I baked everything from scratch. Some people are going to find fault with things no matter what it is, no matter who you are. It doesn't matter. It's not about you and it's not about the product. It's about them being a-holes, okay? So if you get somebody like that, you have to make the calculation in your own mind. Is it worth my emotional energy to even deal with this jerk? Because these people are jerks and you can't reason with them. You can't, you can't say, no, but this is, this is my policy or whatever. Because the problem is they can turn around and file a case with Etsy. Now look, you might want to wait because with their credit card or with Etsy or with Amazon or wherever you're selling, they might file a case, but they might not. So what I would do and what I have done in, in situations on Etsy where people complain about things, I kind of do a quick mental calculation. Like you have to say, how aggressive is this person being? Do you think they're going to persist? Do you think that they're going to come up with the wandering complaint, right? And if they're, if they're coming at you with multiple, multiple messages, I would just say, you know, honestly, I would just say, look, I could either refund them and get them off my back right now, or I could just say no refunds based on my shop policies and take a chance that they don't file a claim. That could be the best thing if you really need the money, okay? Because a lot of people won't file a claim. They're just trying to see how far they can push you. And I've seen situations where people will file a like they'll, they'll contact an Etsy seller and say oh I um I have this complaint and then the Etsy seller's like well that can't be possible because of this and they're like oh haha you caught me oh well doesn't hurt trying so they clearly knew that they were being a scammer all right that's that's just dirty but some people are like that those people aren't probably going to file a claim um, there's, there's a lot of package claims going on right now because of this Etsy purchase protection that's going on. And the same thing happens on my website, but there's no purchase protection there and I get to control what they do and, until they decide to file a claim with the credit card, then you take your chances. But if, if people file a claim with Etsy about the package and Etsy's just being refunding left and right, you take a chance with that. It might be worth it just to tell them, I don't, accept refunds and that's in my shop policies so I'm sorry that's the it's over this is done and if they continue to email you and send you messages just mark it as spam send it to spam and just keep your fingers crossed that they don't file a claim but if they file a claim and Etsy refunds them financially you're no worse off than if you refunded them because Etsy's probably going to refund them out of your money if it's a missing package claim, it comes out of Etsy's money, which is really our money because it's fees, right? So don't fool yourself that way. But, it, you know, you're kind of taking a chance with that and it continues your contact with that person. So, like, I, you know, I've seen people on in my Facebook group who say, I've been dealing with this woman for two weeks and she says her package wasn't didn't arrive and I, it says it was delivered. And I'll say, what do you sell? There's like stickers. So it's like a $2 sticker and it costs 50 cents to mail the pack. It's an envelope. They didn't even, you know, for that amount of money, just refund them and get them off your back because then you won't have these messages to deal with every day. It's not worth it. And there are a lot of packages that aren't being delivered. Someone in the Facebook group yesterday posted that the post office is insisting that they delivered a package to her house and her ring camera shows no package. You know, I mean, mistakes happen. So you have to do a quick mental calculation. How much is this order worth? How much of a profit is it worth? And how much is it going to be worth my time and energy and mental stability to have to deal with this person until they leave me alone? And a lot of times you're just paying someone to leave you alone. 
Okay, so if it's a really high priced item, I would take the route of no refunds or just try to give them, you know, fix whatever's broken or whatever, but don't refund right away. And if they do file a claim, then you have to take your chances, but at least you're not giving them all that money back. If it's something really inexpensive and it's going to take more time than you have to deal with it, then just give them the refund and get them off your back. And that's a mental calculation that you have to do for yourself. And what is inexpensive for one person isn't going to be inexpensive for someone else. So you have to figure that out for yourself. But sometimes it's not worth it to deal with these scammers and to deal with these cranks and to deal with these people who just are trying to get refunds for no reason. All right. Now, I did say I was going to tell the story of the repossessed wedding cake. I have so many more cake stories, but I'm looking at the time and this is getting long already. So I will tell the story of the repossessed wedding cake. This was a scammer. And this, I have never in my life seen a scam being played out in front of me. Okay. And it was very interesting to watch. I, I was finding it intriguing. However, this was the situation. All right. So a, a couple of women had come to my office and said, we are going to buy a quinceanera cake and a wedding cake. Okay. Now, if you are not familiar, quinceanera is a South American tradition. I think it started, I don't know what country it started, maybe Mexico, but it's South American. It kind of, you know, but it's, it's the 15th birthday of a girl. I believe the history is that that's where you decide whether you're going to be a nun or whether you're going to be a wife. I'm not sure, but it's kind of like a coming of age party, right? It's, it's similar to a sweet 16, but it's a little more serious. And this is a big deal. A quinceanera is not a small fun party. Hey, let's all get together. It, it's a big deal in, in different cultures. So they were spending a lot of money. And the way that a quinceanera works a lot of times is that people will have sponsors. So it's like family members will pay for the cake. Somebody else will pay for the decorations. They have sponsors who help pay for the party. And it's like a wedding. It's like a, it's a big deal. So these people came to my appointment and one of them was going to buy a quinceanera cake. The other one was going to buy a wedding cake. So the woman who, I think the, maybe the daughter was there. I don't remember. They chose their cake. It was a big, it was like a wedding cake. It's a big tiered cake. It was a large cake. And then the girl who was going to get married, I designed her cake. She put down a deposit. They both put down deposits. They left. The quinceanera comes, I make the cake, I deliver it, and they had wanted, I want to say that they had wanted roses on it. So I did gum paste roses or whatever it was, I put it on the cake, and I delivered it. It was at a restaurant, a local restaurant, and I left. I get a call, probably when I got home, this cake is terrible, it's terrible, it's awful. And I'm like, there's nothing wrong with the cake. It's exactly what they ordered. Same thing, you know. So generally when that happens, I know something's up. And this woman, I, I knew at the time that something was up because I wrote a check for the full amount of the cake refund before I left my house to drive back down there. I don't remember what she said, but I knew that something was up and I was prepared, okay, because I was not having this. And I've dealt with these people before. See, this is the thing. Once you're in business for a long enough time, you've dealt with these people before. You know who they are. You can smell them coming. When they start complaining, you know what's going to happen. And I was done. I was like, I'm just not going to have this. So I just wrote a check for the full amount. I didn't tell her that, but I drove down there and they're all there. Like the guests were arriving. The cake was set up. The guests, they're all in like, formal evening gowns i mean like sequins everything it was a big party the guests were starting to arrive and so the mother and the person who had paid for the cake the sponsor who paid for the cake was some guy i'm not sure a family member or friend or something but they they kind of were uh, we were standing in the foyer of the restaurant while guests are walking in and they're standing there and they're like this cake is terrible so we walked, I walked in and they're showing me where they had taken roses and shoved them into the cake. And they're like, look at this is wrong. And I said, I can't see what it is because you've shoved roses in here. And it's un like everything that you're complaining about is under this. And they're like, are you saying this is our fault? And I was like, yeah, kind of, because I can't see what you're talking about. Um, so we went back into the foyer. And the thing about 
me that they did not know is that I used to live in Spain. When I was a kid, I lived in Spain for four years. And so I speak passable Spanish. I understand it more than I speak it, okay? So we're standing in the lobby and, oh, and at this point, the girl who had bought her wedding cake, she had a deposit. I hadn't done her wedding cake yet. She had put down a deposit. She came in because she was the, the sister or something. I'm not sure what relative she was, but she was one of the one of the people who was there. So we had the mother of the quinceanera girl, the woman who had deposited her cake with me, and the guy who had paid for the cake. So we're all standing there and they were telling me what was wrong with the cake. And I was standing there with the contract saying, no, it says right here, that's what you got. Well, then this is wrong. It's again, the wandering complaint, right? They're trying to get me to give them money back. And I knew that was what was going on as soon as I saw those roses being shoved into the cake. So we're standing in the foyer and they started speaking in Spanish in front of me. Not a problem for me. And at, at no point during that tasting appointment did I tell them that I speak Spanish. And I think a lot of people will do that. A lot of people will say, oh, I speak Spanish too. Hey, como estas? You know, and I don't, I don't do that because I want to hear what they're saying. <laughs> and that's, it's kind of, it's kind of snaky, but I like it. Okay. Because I find it very instructive to hear what people are talking about in front of me when they think that you can't understand them. Because I think that's rude. Okay, so anyway, we're standing in the foyer. They start talking in Spanish about how much can we get her to give us back. And the guy's like, this, is, this was an expensive cake. And the woman's like, well, I know, but she wanted what she wanted. And the guy's like, well, let's see if we can get her to give us half back. And I'm just standing there like I don't understand. So then they came at me with a different complaint. I had the contract. I'm like, nope, here it is. So then they talk a little bit more. Well, what about this? Let's try this. Let's try saying this. Let's try saying this and maybe she'll give us some money back. They came back at me. I'm like, nope, here it is. Right in the contract. That's what you ordered. They kept this up for like 10 minutes. And finally, the mother said, I could get a better cake if I went to the grocery store. And at that point, I was done. I was done listening to them. I was done with their nonsense. I was done whatever. I should have said adios on the way out, but I didn't. And I said, okay, I'm going to refund the cake right now, but I'm taking it with me because I'm not going to give you a free cake. And if it's that bad, the grocery store is open. There's one right down the street and you can go get some cakes. Okay, now, if you know a quinceanera is not where you have grocery store cakes. And I think that they were so shocked, they didn't know what to do. Okay, but I, I'm like, here's your check. I'm going to go take my cake now. And I turned to the girl whose wedding cake I was going to do. And I said, and I am not doing your wedding cake. And I will be refunding your deposit also. That's canceled. I'm canceling your cake. And I, I said, where do I take the cake out? What door do you want me to use? And they're like, Ugh. so I went in and I told one of the waiters, I'm taking the cake. And they were like, what? And I said, yeah, I'm taking the cake. And I had them open the door in front of all the guests. I don't care. They're going to have a fit. I'm going to take the cake. I refunded it. I had the, I had the waiters open the door. I went and disassembled. I disassembled the cake because you it's a big cake. You have to take it apart in pieces. I picked it up. I took it out to my car in sections and I drove it to the Ronald McDonald house where I donated it. And they were very appreciative of having such a nice cake for the people who were there. And very interestingly, I found out from another woman, and I think I've mentioned her before. This is another home-based baker who ended up doing the wedding cake for the sister or whoever she was. I'm not sure what relative she was, but she like months later, I saw on Facebook, oh, and here's a cake that I just did this weekend. And it was the cake that I had designed for this girl. So I was like, I know whose cake that was. And I called Laura and I said, was this the person? She said, yeah. And I told her the story and she's like, oh my God. And she said, they never gave me one bit of trouble. And I said, I bet they didn't because now they know what's going to happen. Right? So Basically, people treat you the way that you teach them to, tr to treat you. And sometimes you have to put your foot down. So that's the story of the repossessed wedding cake. And I have never done that. I have never, I have never walked out of a venue with a cake before. But I've also never been standing in front of people 
who were actively trying to figure out what to tell me and what to complain about that would make me give them money back. And that was so interesting to watch the process. So leave me any questions. I hope this never happens to you, but it will. And you just have to learn when to put your foot down and when to say it's not worth my time and just give the money back because some people are psychotic, right? Leave me any questions. I'll see you back here next week and I will talk to you later.